Um, one of the things that's been exciting, so to speak, for this show uh, during political season here in our city is that we've had a number of uh, candidates who are running for mayor of Cleveland stop by our studio and talk to us and talk to our audience and let them know, uh, for those of you who live in Cleveland, uh, what their plans are. And so we have another one. We have State Representative Bill Patman, who is also running for mayor of the city of Cleveland. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, and thank you for having me. So let's, uh, let's talk first. What made you decide to run for mayor? I've always uh, wanted to see our city self-actualize. And as I have uh, applied my trade, uh, city council for 12 years, um, state, uh, Ohio State legislature for another seven years, and I look at my city and I see it suffering. At night when I lay in my bed on East Boulevard, I can hear the sirens and gunshots. That is not just a sound of a siren or a gunshot. It is the screams of pain coming from my city. And that kind of gripped me at some point last year. And I decided, well, I don't see anybody on the horizon that can change that, that understands it has a commitment. I said, well, if not me, then who? And I kept waiting for a young uh, kind of a politician who had good ideas and common sense to step into the race. Didn't happen. So I stepped in. So let's dig a little bit more into that. We're talking with State Representative Bill Patman, uh, who's running for mayor of Cleveland. What would you do specifically to address the violence in Cleveland? That's obviously something that's been on everybody's minds. Um, we've had an, a very high homicide rate. Um, so what would you do specifically to address that? One of the things you have to do is get the guns off the street and not buy back. Not the Saturday night special you buy from, from somebody for 75 or 100 bucks. That's not the answer. The answer is what they're doing in Washington, D.C. They have a sensor that they set up in neighborhoods and that they can tell within three feet where a gunshot came from. Combine that with cameras, and pretty much you're going to figure out who has legally has a gun and who is eagle, illegally testing their gun or committing a crime. Those are innovative technologies that we have to bring to Cleveland to remove the guns from Cleveland's streets. Most of our homicides uh, are from stolen or bought handguns by somebody who doesn't have a permit and shouldn't have a gun. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you touched on that point because I think a lot of times that kind of gets misconstrued that we just hear about the problem with guns. But like you said, statistically, most of the crimes are being committed with illegal guns. Yes. So for people who are not supposed to have them in the first place. Exactly. And so I, I think uh, that's a, a very interesting proposal that can both simultaneously deal with the crime situation while also not infringing on anyone who has the legal right to have, have the gun to have the gun. Um, so moving forward, Another thing that everybody has been talking about has been jobs. Mm -hmm. What would your what is your plan specifically to address uh, the business climate in Cleveland, making sure that there are enough jobs and also making sure that the people in our community have the skills to obtain those jobs? Well, you, you answer almost both questions at the same time. First and foremost, uh, there are one ads that come out in the papers and on the Internet uh, on a continuous basis for jobs that are not that go unfilled for lack of qualified applicants. First of all, those thousands of jobs, we must train and qualify people to take those. There should not be in a city with the unemployment rate that we have that has people looking for workers of any kind, of all kinds. It's up to government, I believe, to train for the jobs of now and the future. And that is what will do us a whole lot of good in getting to the point where we have a lower unemployment rate and fill some of that void that's left out there. The other thing is that there is a chicken and the egg process here. People are like, we need jobs. I said, okay. We need jobs. Said, okay. No, you need businesses. You cannot have an egg without a chicken. And businesses actually hire people so they can make a profit and that they can get their uh, product out and so forth. So 
We must be more business friendly, and we must be in the business of recruiting businesses to Cleveland and then having a trained workforce for them. We've got to shop. We've got to compete. And that we don't do presently. We're talking with State Representative Bill Patman, who's running for mayor of the city of Cleveland. Um, education. That's another thing that uh, is, is on everyone's minds. And we have seen improvements in the, uh, the Cleveland School District, but according to some people, they believe that it's not improving fast enough. So where do you stand on where the school district is currently, and what would you do to uh, advance the cause of education in the city? Let me just say that I, I voted on something called the third grade reading guarantee as a state representative. Um, I think it was co-sponsor even on it. And that was important to me because as I'd gone through the process of learning, they build prison cells for people who cannot read at a third grade level when they get to be uh, a third grader. And so the guarantee is the guarantee is that you will not go to the fourth grade until you can read at a third grade level. Forty percent of the children in the Cleveland public school system fail the third grade reading test. What does that say? It says that probably instead of having uh, or people promoting the idea that they have improved Cleveland schools, I beg to differ. I say they're not. They're headed in the other direction. If you take that 40 percent and subtract it from 100, you end up with 60 percent, not 70 percent, not incremental change. You end up with a worse system or first situation than we have now. What would I do? There's only one model of a public school that works. So well, what is that? Well, if you go to all urban areas, we're having very similar situations. What we don't have is Solon schools, Beechwood schools, and so forth that don't work. Small suburban models work. The Cleveland public school system is a large bureaucracy that needs to be broke down so that parents and people who are concerned can get to the responsible parties. I dare you on this show to ask for a meeting with the school superintendent. It'll be a long time before you get one. In the meantime, whatever the problem was with your child, you'll be shuffled off to other people who probably can't do anything about it. So my uh, uh, reform effort will create some districts, maybe six, have some vice superintendents who are responsible both financially and for achievement of those districts. And if they don't get the job done, we'll fire them. Unlike the excuses that we have now uh, about how our superintendent got a, an award. An award for what? Our school system needs to be reformed. And I'm talking big reform. We're talking with State Representative Bill Patman, who's running for uh, mayor of the city of Cleveland. And another issue that's on, especially right now, on uh, everyone's minds is the police department. Mm -hmm. um, as most people know, uh, the police department is under a consent decree. And real quick, for people who don't know what that is, can you explain what a, what a consent decree is? And then I'll go into my uh, next question about that. Um, there were a number of complaints. The federal government came in and investigated and found that Cleveland Police Department was guilty of discrimination and the use, in the use of deadly force and brutality and some other things. They said, okay, we say yes, we, that may have happened, we don't admit any guilt yet. And so they signed what's called a consent decree, which the court says, we'll give you time to improve the situation before we come in and kind of take over completely. And so that's what's going on right now. But the problem is, is that the consent decree is being resisted. We have not met one, not one benchmark on that, that list of things that have to be done, like uh, non-discrimination uh, policing or uh, thorough search and seizure and being sensitive to people who have handicaps. Those things have not been done. So again, we're in a situation where there has, we have to do more. And I look forward to the opportunity to help with that. So what would you do to uh, ensure uh, that the consent decree is followed as well as any other reforms that you uh, think is necessary for the Cleveland Police Department? I asked a question some time ago um, as a young, younger politician. And I said, what do you, they kept talking about sensitivity training and training. And I said, well, what do you have when you train a racist? 
people said, what do you mean? I said, well, if you find out an officer is a racist and you train him, what do you have at the end of the day? And he got through, I told him, you have a trained racist. <laughs> it's what you have. Mm -hmm. So I propose that for that behavior, there has to be stringent penalties. Years and years ago, most folks, you guys, before you were more than a twinkle in your dad's <laughs> eye, <laughs> there was Goodman, Swerner, and Cheney, mm -hmm. civil rights workers who were killed in Mississippi and buried. The federal government came in after they couldn't get a local conviction, they couldn't get a jury that would say this happened with all the evidence that they had, and the civil rights section of the Justice Department came in, found those people, charged them, and said they had criminally violated their civil rights, sent them off to prison for 10 years. 10 years in prison is a deterrent. And the very best we can do is expect to change people's behavior. And that's exactly, and it's called a deterrent. Would I use it? I have already. I wrote a letter to the Justice Department right after 137 shots were fired in a chase here in Cleveland. What they came back and said to me, we're looking into it. Hopefully, uh, I can get more uh, and a better answer as a mayor of the city of Cleveland. We're talking with State Representative Bill Patman, who's running for mayor of the city of Cleveland. And one of the things that uh, we hear from certain segments of the city, certain segments of the community is change, the, the desire for change, that people are calling for change. As someone who is a seasoned politician, who has a record of service, how do you make the case to people who are now, as you know, there's kind of this mood, there's been this mood in the country of wanting non-traditional quote unquote politicians. How do you uh, make the case that having that record and having that resume is a plus and not a minus? Well, first of all, you have to understand what politics is. Most people don't. Is it, you say, you're a politician. Well, I'm like an electrician or uh, any other trician, a dietrician. There's a subject matter, and I work on it. Now, whether I do good work or bad work, I should be rated on that. So politician is no reason to negate somebody doing the job that needs to be done. That's one. Two, we've tried that. This country is trying that experiment <laughs> as we speak. Yes, it's failing miserably, <laughs> it is. Well, I'll let you be the judge of what it's doing. <laughs> so it's a complicated thing, politics. The framers made it that way. That's why there are three branches of government. It's a three-legged thing here that you're dealing with. And you better understand the Constitution and the concept of the administration, the legislature, and the judicial portion of it. And when you begin to understand how it all works together, it takes some time, but you become a seasoned politician. And a politician is no more than somebody who works on the policy and procedures in which we live by. They're called laws. Let everybody know um, how to get in contact with your campaign, um, if they want to donate, how they can do that, and all that good stuff. Uh, I have a website, and it's patmanforcleveland.com. And you can donate over that website. And I also offer to give, for you to give your opinion. I don't set out a whole lot of what I'm even talking about now because there will be time for me to tell people what I'm going to do. I want to hear. I'm actually on the listening process, listening to the folks through my website as to what they want. Because it's one thing to, to uh, call yourself a representative. It's another thing to represent the life, feelings, and understandings and wants of the people who sent you to do that job. Thank you so much, Representative, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.